Buck Showalter. Buck, let me ask you, by starting with this, the extent of the investigation and the depth with which the Astros cheated, were you surprised at how detailed it was? Not really. You know, I, the, the lure to win does strange things to people. You know, when you're supposed to be that good at technology and all these other things, it makes you wonder why you feel like you have to cheat. And uh, I know a lot of people uh, were really interested to see what was going to come down out of this. Some people I've talked to today think it was not harsh enough, and some people thought it was, and that's to be expected. You know, Buck, you've been very vocal that you think the penalties have to have some severe, I guess, uh, penalties next year with on the field with the Houston Astros. Do you feel like the commissioner and the penalties, Hinch is gone, Lou now the GM is gone, do you think they were harsh enough for next year? Well, John, speaking of someone who's been suspended, did you ever make those rounds, John? No. Okay, God bless you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you look at it, uh, okay, you know, they get hurt in the draft a little bit, but they're picking 30th because they finished so high. You know, you can reallocate that money a little bit into other departments to make yourself well. Um, you know, the lack of institution con control, I mean, you look at it from a college football team, you get put on probation, you don't go to bowl games, you... Uh, lose scholarships and you lose your ability to win for a couple of years but you know it's different and the commissioner had a tough job here you know a lot of those things are dictated by precedent and you kind of look at you know my eyes are cast towards the, the Braves and what happened to their general manager some what happened with the hacking of the computers I mean you go back as far as Pete Rose but you know it, it's just a it's a sad day for baseball in a way but I'm hoping we can put this behind us I know one thing if I'm the Yankee manager I've texted a little bit with Aaron today I know he feels a little vindicated about some of his suspicions. Buck, when you look at the relationship between a manager and a general manager, that has to be a strong relationship. And when you look at this investigation, Lunau says he had absolutely no knowledge of it, whereas Hitch knew about it and said that he tried to stop it. How much does it surprise you that Lunau and Hinch apparently didn't communicate about this? Well, I know that it's not as much, Jack, for me, communication is, is, is a presence. I know going back with Gene Michael or John Hart, I mean, these guys were in the locker room every day. They were down there five minutes after the game was over talking about the next day and talking about things. And you're aware of the atmosphere of the clubhouse. I don't know how much today's general manager goes down there, Alunau, in this example, you know, because there's no way you can be in a locker room. Let's face it, they need to have some control over a compliance officer. We've been talking about this for years down in the clubhouse. These guys really shouldn't be back up in the clubhouse. The video rooms and the replay rooms are right beside the dugout. There's so much of a temptation there. And there's enough ways to get an edge on the field without using that type of technology. Buck, can you shed a little more light on your exchange with Aaron Boone today? Did he get into specifics of how he feels vindicated? Oh, it was one way street. You know, it was just a text. You know, I, I don't want to get into Aaron and, and that, but I did uh, mention it because I know that during that time, he was pretty vocal about some of it and was kind of uh, ri ridiculed a little bit by some of the Astro people. So I think looking back on I know as a Yankee uh, fan, so to speak, I know it bothers me that we maybe you think about all the people that this touched, people that lost their jobs, pitchers that, uh, you know, whether it be a pitching coach or, you know, you think about all the people that it's affected. I've heard from a lot of them. Uh, today that, uh, you know, really quite upset about it. You know, Buck, one of the things that came out of this investigation with the commissioner is the players were obviously involved in decoding the signs, but there weren't any players that were suspended. Did that surprise you? Uh, somewhat. I think that's really hard to pinpoint. I mean, John, you know, you start a game, you look at the, I know I look at the first base coach, third base coach, are they doing anything out of, you're listening for sounds out of the dugout. I know Matt Weeders, are you paranoid or are you alert? You're constantly listening as you did, John, for sounds out of the dugout. When you see 12 straight fastballs thrown to start a game and the first time you throw something off speed, the guy doesn't even budge. There's body language you read that you see things and, and it raises up your suspicion flag. So, you know, those are things you're constantly looking out for. As far as players, you know, John, you know this better than anybody. Every team has somebody like this. You know, we had somebody in Baltimore that would look at video before a series and look for something. There's so many things that you can see in video and see from the dugout that you may not be able to see in the batter's box. There's this relay with the first couple of hitters. Hey, he is flaring his glove on the changeup. You know, that's, that's just understanding. It's like a quarterback that does certain things on a pass play. 
you know, those are things that you need to pick up. And, as, and on the other side of it, you have to defend it to make sure your guys aren't doing it. But you have to watch the game and understand that. I never got an advance report from a scout that didn't have, back when they used advanced scouts, and it didn't have something about a third base coach's science or about something a pitcher might do. Please look for this. I think I saw this. So there's a relay of information. But in, in anything you can get off video before a series, so be it. It's fair game. But once the game starts to artificially be able to get that, that's the problem that the commissioner has. Buck, we know how detailed you are and were as a manager. When you try and put the pieces of the puzzle, or in this case, the pieces of the crime together, how do you think the Astros went down this road? Why do you think they ended up doing this and doing it so often? Well, I think, you know, Jack, if you look at it like this, that there's so many people that are trying to bring something, especially in today's game, because you may not have played professional baseball, you may not have played in the big leagues or even minor leagues, so you're trying to bring something. There's so much pressure on some of these young people uh, to bring something. Hey, I can get this. If I can get this seed in here, I can get this. And what's, believe me, when a veteran player says, hey, can you get this? You know, these guys are going to jump at the opportunity to contribute to a club, and sometimes clandestinely. So, you know, but there's a way to find, to see it happening on the field with your naked eyes. You can see things that are going on uh, where, you know, the way they're not budging on a breaking ball. And they, you know, these guys are throwing 96 miles an hour. In order to stick your nose out over the plate on a breaking ball, uh, you've got to really have a pretty good feel for what's coming. So there's ways to tell that. So, uh, you know, getting back to your original question, I mean, that's, I think there's a lot of pressure on all these different departments to bring something that makes everybody go, wow, that's a real game changer. Hey, Buck, I want to read an excerpt from the commissioner's uh, examination and investigation. He said this about the Astros players. Most of the position players on the 2017 team either received sign information from the banging scheme or participated in the scheme by helping to dis decode signs or bang the trash can. Many of the players who were interviewed admitted that they knew the scheme was wrong because it crossed the line from what the player believed was fair competition and or violated Major League rules. Players stated that if manager A.J. Hinch told told them to stop engaging in the conduct, they would have immediately stopped. That seems like one of the most damning statements about A.J. Hinch, that it would have taken a simple conversation to say, we need to end this, but it never happened. Were you surprised by that? Uh, you know, once again, there's such a lure. Let's face it, let's talk about a lot of the money involved, a lot of the things that are going on. There's such a lure there, and we've all had it. You know, someone leaves a scouting report in your desk, the previous team, or you, you know, I've gotten stuff handed to me from a team advance report about us. You know, what do you do with that information? And you, you know, there's such an angel and a and a devil having a fight behind your back, and one of them's going to win. So, uh, you know, you can get caught up in it. I like AJ. I've always had a good relationship with him. I understand the pressure involved on this, but you know, I, it's just hard for me to fathom that anything is going on in a locker room or in a dugout. Uh, that you're that close to, that you're not aware of every little thing that's going on, and you can't turn a blind eye to it. I mean, I know when our guys felt like they had somebody's pitches, it was like, you know, they can't wait to share that information. Quite frankly, I've been surprised that it's stayed below below public consumption for so long because nobody in baseball can keep a secret. Well, Buck, always appreciate your unique insight. Thanks for joining us. On